My name is Scott Barry Golfman, and I'm a cognitive scientist. I'm interested in the development of intelligence, creativity, personality, um, especially with linkages to education and business and how we can get the best out of people. So my research interests definitely uh, stem from some early personal experiences. For the first three years of my life, I had um, auditory processing disorder. I had a lot of fluid in my ears and it made me very slow to process information. I was put in special education when I was young, repeated third grade, bullied a lot, um, and uh, all these early uh, educational experiences um, where I was treated like I was um, ungifted, you know, the opposite of gifted, um, led me to, to, to question um, uh, my own capabilities, so you know, what, 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 what can I exhibit that, um, that, that could defy other people's expectations as well as um, when I eventually did start defying expectations made me wonder other people um, what they're capable of. Um, I think if it weren't for a couple key teachers in my, in my, in my life who believed in me, I definitely uh, I wouldn't have gone um, beyond and I would have questioned my, uh, my place in the educational system. So the traditional way to measure intelligence is through uh, the IQ test, you know, which is a test that includes a whole wide range of different kinds of cognitive abilities that are intellectual functions. Uh, so it may ask you to mentally rotate an object, it may ask you to, uh, uh, for vocabulary, uh, it may ask you to uh, general knowledge, and that's the most traditional way to measure intelligence. In recent years, there's been researchers who have attempted to go beyond the traditional way of measuring intelligence, um, have proposed uh, theories of multiple intelligences. So Howard Gardner has proposed there's um, seven or eight different intelligences, uh, in, and he's included things like music and artistic skills. And uh, Actually, I don't know if he includes artistic skills, music, um, dance, um, and uh, spatial abilities, I guess, which would, would be related to artistic skills. Um, and Robert Sternberg, who was, was in my doctoral advisor, one of my doctoral advisors, uh, proposed there's three types of intelligence. There's analytical, creative, and practical. So they've done a great service by broadening our idea of the kinds of cognitive, key cognitive skills that are important for intellectual functioning. Most recently, um, I proposed the theory of personal intelligence, where I argue that all these other theories of intelligences that currently exist, um, while they have gone beyond the traditional IQ as, as the main metric, they still operate within this individual differences paradigm. So they're still comparing people to each other. They're saying, you know, you're still, it's okay you're not good at music, you can still be good at math, or it's okay you're not good at math. Because, and that sort of thinking, I wanted to break away from that sort of thinking, because I think it fosters a fixed mindset. Um, and I wanted to um, cultivate more of a growth mindset, which is a, a term that uh, Joshua Aronson and uh, Carol Dweck use, uh, very, uh, who've done great research on the importance of viewing the development of abilities as this ongoing uh, uh, developmental process. That, um, and I wanted to argue that part of that developmental process is engagement. And I think in the engagement aspect has been sorely lacking in uh, prior conceptualizations of human intelligence. Uh, the thing that's one of the most interesting things to me is to see how people can go from appearing very tuned out and uh, very um, uh, almost unintelligent um, and we prejudge their intelligence too soon and then we get them engaged in a personally meaningful project or something that they really care deeply about and you see them transform and you see them really uh, capable of, of things that um, if we wrote them off too soon, we would never have had the opportunity of seeing. So um, I think the engagement process is really important for uh, understanding the expression of intelligence. Yeah, so I think that that educators, um, it, it'd be really good for educators to become well informed of the latest science of development and, um, and the various key skills that are necessary for success in academia as well as um, outside of school in, in, in the stage of life. And there is some um, really interesting work going on on uh, the importance of self-regulation, um, a, key, a key competency um, that allows you to regulate your emotions and regulate your thoughts so they don't interfere with um, the learning process. That seems to be a very key skill. Um, I've already mentioned mindset is very important, having this fostering, this growth mindset. But I also think that educators should be aware of the 
uh, the potential detriment of um, low expectations for students. And, um, and I would encourage teachers to, to constantly look beyond the labels that they're, um, you know, they're being told. I mean, if a student is in special education, for instance, and you could be in special education for lots of reasons, from behavioral problems to, um, to uh, dyslexia, reading problems to you know, math, uh, math disability, um, lots of different reasons. And the, important, and the crucial thing is to um, not view that person, the totality of that person, as disabled or learning disabled, um, but to recognize that, like all of us, you know, there's, there's various patterns of strengths and weaknesses, and um, there, we can play off of strengths a lot more um, than, than we currently do in, in, in the current educational paradigm. So some people treat intelligence as different than creativity, and, um, and in, in a conceptual way, they can be viewed um, differently from each other. Um, if you view intelligence more traditionally as the ability to efficiently process information quickly um, and, um, and learn, be able to capacity for learning abstract reasoning, some of these more traditional intellectual functions. And you can contrast that with, uh, with creativity, which is your ability to generate new ideas, to um, think divergently, to um, think, to use your imagination, to imagine future possibilities that don't, don't necessarily exist. Now, there is a lot of overlap between uh, intelligence, as I just defined it, and creativity, as I just defined it, because you can imagine what that, uh, you can imagine that when you're trying to imagine the future, you can, it's still necessary to draw on some of these intellectual functions, um, like your ability to focus and, and concentrate and, and reason and problem solve. A lot of creative, uh, creative problem solving, where there isn't an obvious solution, um, does require bringing in some of these intellectual processes, like what are called executive functions, um, which allow you to integrate lots of different information and then have this aha moment where you're like, ah, oh, that's the idea. So I don't think that these, these things um, the, that we call intelligence or creativity are necessarily, um, they're, they're not completely distinct from each other. Uh, I think the be a better way to view um, is that, view the whole uh, situation is that there's human cognition. Um, human cognition, we, what, what we're, all of us are a complex system of emotions and cognitive functions and motivations. We all have dreams, desires, values, personalities. Um, we have lots of different ways we differ, but, we're, but each of us is a, is a whole person, a dynamic system. All these, as a system, all these different skills um, can become integrated and, and feed off each other. It's, it's possible to isolate particular variables, like say, oh, this person differs from this person in intelligence, or this person differs from this person in creativity. But I don't think that does full justice to the, um, the full spectrum of what people, will, people are capable of doing, and it also ignores the context of uh, all the other capabilities that person has when you just compare people based on one dimension. Uh, so I think that if you really want to get the best creatively out of people, I think it's best to, to look at that whole person and look at all the different um, unique value system that person can bring to the world and help them make that unique contribution to the world. When I was in ninth grade, I was still in special education and a teacher who uh, was covering for the regular teacher that day came in and saw my frustration. I was taking this untimed history test, and um, she, you know, she's like, "What? What's, what's the what's the problem here? You know, you're not you're not into this." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, you know, I have the rest of my life to take this test since it's untimed. So what's the what's the point?" And and, and she saw I was very frustrated, um, but she took me aside after class and she asked me, she said, "You know, I just what I got to have to ask you, why are you here? Why are you in special education?" And I didn't have a good answer. I realized I did not have a good answer to that question. It was really the first time in my life that I ever thought, um, it ever dawned on me to ask myself um, or even challenge my, my place in the, in the hierarchical structure of, of the school system. But it, a switch, like, it was like a switch went off and, um, and I was all of a sudden inspired to, um, to, to take myself out of special education and, and try with the crutches off to, to, to handle regular school and I signed up for a wide range of different, um, uh, different uh, subjects and I didn't do well and everything. But the important, the important thing is that I, I, for the first time in my life, searched for an identity, uh, which I, I, I was um, robbed of the opportunity for an identity prior to ninth grade because people told me my identity. They said, you're learning disabled. Well, when I took that label off, um, it allowed me, it opened up uh, uh, incredible opportunities to uh, really, for the first time in my life, explore who I really was and what I could offer the world uniquely.